Welcome uh, to today's webinar, What is New from Yealink and How to Ease the Transition of Your Yealink Devices. So I'm sure a lot of you will have seen all sorts of new products coming out recently from Yealink with various being discontinued. So the idea behind today was just to put everything together to make it easier to understand. Agenda for today, so we've got a short intro about Yealing and ProView. There's some end of life products to go through, all of which have already been announced. So just as a reminder uh, to show you what the replacements are. Uh, transitioning your devices, so showing you the current portfolio and what's new. We'll have a look at the personal collaboration devices. So that's their headsets and speakerphones and also a little bit about how ProView can help support you. Just to remind you as well, we do have a couple of Yealix newest wireless headsets up for grab. So anyone who has attended today for the whole duration, you will be into, entered into a prize draw and I will be telling you more about these headsets later on as well. My name is Anna Maria and I'm the head of sales here at ProView Communications. And just in case I forget to say later, thanks so much for everyone to be in here today. Um, there's a lot of you and I appreciate you're all busy. So yeah, thank you. And then just before we start, I will be taking questions and feel free to ask as we go along. Um, there will also be some time to ask questions at the end, but if you've got anything you wanna know, pop it in the box. I will do my best to answer as we go, but if there is anything that I don't know the answer to right away, I will be able to just find out and come back to you after the webinar. So, ProView and Yealink. So, we've been working together since 2009. We're absolute best buds at this stage. We work closely together to develop our service offering around Yealink. So, all of the automatic provisioning that we do and the remote device management. We also get heavily involved in testing their new products at the beta stage prior to launch. So, for example, uh, we were heavily invested, um, involved in testing the new multi-cell, so helping them improve them, getting the range right before they launch, and the same with the new wireless headsets. To give you a bit of background on Yealink, so for those of you who don't know, and some of you may remember, when Yealink first came out into the market years ago, and even I remember at the time, it was, you know, this new unknown manufacturer, people weren't quite sure where it was going to go, how good it would be, um, but they did quickly grow to become number one in the market, uh, in the most countries across the globe, not just the UK. So, as you can see in that graph there, the growth rate is significant. And they have put a lot of investment into developing their products, which is why you will find that their products are the most innovative in the market today. Here we have a few of the main platforms that Yealink is certified to work with. So, and ITSPs, I mean, you've got all the major ones there. Yealink is essentially designed to be able to work on pretty much anything. So if you are developing your own platform, then both Yale and Camprove, you can get involved to help you get it supported. Um, but we've not really come across anything yet where that wouldn't be a possibility. To the end of life products and their replacement. So there's the A-Link T2 series, which has been discontinued uh, still available. There's a few months worth of stock, but it's been replaced by the T3 series, which we'll take a look at. Then you've got your T4S and its replacement of the T5. And then the W532P has been replaced with the W53P and there's various other new DEX products as well. So we'll cover all of those today. This here is just to give you an overview so you can see the portfolio as a whole. So this is with the discontinued products removed. So for the desk phone range, as you can see here, we've got the T5 series on the left. So that's your main um, high-end uh, uh, office phone series. On the right, we've got the T3 series, which again has been out for a little while, replacing the T2 series, and that's your more entry-level range. And then just due to be in is the T4U series. So this has kind of replaced the T4 series. Your T5 is should really be your replacement for that but they bought in a t4u as sort as just a lower cost option for where 
where the T5 might just not be quite suitable. We've also then got the three conference phone units and their various Dex products, which also now includes multi-cell and a ruggedized handset. So we're going to take a look at all of these as we go through the presentation today. So going into a bit more detail, we will start with the T5 series phones. So top of the range is your VP59 uh, video phone. This one's actually pretty cool because it's got a large speaker bar across it and a HDMI port. So with that and the video camera built in, you can actually use it as a mini conferencing device by plugging it into a TV and then you're using that big speaker and mics there to support it for the audio part. Um, I've done quite a lot of testing with this one. You can, there's other things you can do with it that are pretty cool. For example, um, all the BLF keys that you can uh, you can just set on screen with the touch screen and change your extensions without having to go into the web interface. The majority of the other settings are there as well. So that's the highest end one. Moving on, you've got the T58A, which is similar, but it doesn't have the large speaker. And rather than an inbuilt camera, you've basically got a USB port um, with the option to put one in if you need it. And then the rest of your range are just your typical office handset. So as you can see, we're starting with a black and white screen option, but still with a decent amount of BLF keys going up larger in size with a larger screen and then onto your larger touch color screen option. The T5 series, you can view it as an upgrade from the T4 series, and it should be your main replacement when the T4S is fully discontinued. So you can see here the recommended replacements, um, which even just by looking at it, are clearly higher end in terms of screen sizes and additional BLF keys, but the price difference isn't very much. The T5 series phones also does support an expansion module. So anyone who is familiar with the current T4S range, you will be well aware that the expansion module only works on the T46 and T48. So the higher end phones, and if you've got a user that needs an expansion module, but they've got one of the lower end phones, then not only are they buying the expansion module, but they've then got an invest to upgrade their phone as well. So this is a real great cost saver because it works across all. It's a clever piece of equipment too. So um, it is just one module, but it will actually detect what phone it's being plugged into and subsequently changing from black and white to color as required to match the phone that it's in. There are some other notable differences, such as adjustable displays and built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So I'll cover that in a bit more detail now as well. So the adjustable display is really useful in terms of getting it at the right angle for all sorts of reasons, really. Um, I mean, even just as basic as being able to sit in your chair correctly or comfortably, or maybe you happen to have your desk in that annoying part of the room where the sun gets on your screens and it's got glaring during the day. Um, so you're having to move it around to avoid it, whereas now you can just adjust your screen. Or maybe you're just super tall and no phone works for you, whatever angle you're sat at. So it sounds like a really small thing, um, but it's actually one of those things that I think, you know, for, for some people can make a huge difference. All of the phones in this range, except for one of the very lower ones, have built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So the reason that there is one that doesn't, so your lower extended your T53, you've got a version of it that looks the same, but without the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And the reason behind that is if you did want a phone from this range, but didn't necessarily need this feature and wanted to save a few pounds, then you could, could go for that model um, at a slightly lower price. Built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on these is a real game changer, as typically most devices, so if we look at the T4 as an example, um, or even from other manufacturers, you would need to add a dongle. So you have a separate one for your Bluetooth, a separate one for Wi-Fi, which then also means you can only use one at a time, because typically most of those phones will only have one USB port. You know, so what happens if you work from home, for example, and you don't have cabling, so you need to connect over the Wi-Fi, but then the Bluetooth headset that you've already invested in, you then can't use it on your desk phone. And these dongles come in retail roughly about 40 quid per dongle, so immediately you've got an £80 saving right there. 
Another really cool feature, and this is one that only Yealink are currently doing. Um, again, I find it so exciting how innovative their products are. But what we have here is the ability to add DECT technology to the phone itself. So essentially, we're turning the desk phone into a base station as well. So it might be a small office, like the one you got pictured here, or maybe somewhere like a restaurant where you probably have only one desk phone and that might sit in the back office, or maybe the hostess might have it, but everyone else, you know, in the kitchen and staff will have a cordless handset. So um, this will just allow you to run the cordless handsets of the desk phone so everything sits in one clean solution. Now, using the dongle doesn't currently support as many handsets as the actual base station does. So the base station, as it is, currently supports eight. This dongle currently supports four, but they are planning to upgrade that, um, and that will be that will be through um, firmware changes. So hopefully, in the future, we're expecting it to be able to support eight in total. Finally, this range also comes with an acoustic shield. So. As the name suggests, it's a virtual shield uh, that sits around to block out certain noises. So it will have a radius around it for which it picks up. It will pick up all the sounds that it can pick up the person speaking, but then block out any nearby noise. Um, so it's great for loud offices or offices where you're sat really close together, for example, in a call center. And then you've actually got um, three radius distances that you can choose from and configure in the phone itself to set it to. So that might come in handy for security reasons. So let's say you're working in a bank, you've got one person in the bank over the phone repeating the, uh, the customer's security details to get through. And if you're like me and you're really loud and can be heard through other people's phones, then you're probably going to want to have your radius set quite short so that someone else on the other end of the line on another call won't be able to hear. Moving on to the T3 entry level series phones. So this is what is replacing the T2 series, which includes the T19. So there's only three models in this series. So they've condensed it compared to the existing range, which makes it easier and simpler for you to have in your portfolio. So the T30P is your T19 replacement. So as you can see, it's really basic entry level. There's no BLF keys, no frills. This one is PoE, uh, but not gigabit. And then the T31G and T33G are both gigabit. The T31G has got a couple of BLF keys, so similar to the T30P, but just with that extra feature. And then the T30G, 33G, we're supporting a color screen, for physical BLF keys, but then you've actually got a page view giving you 12 in total. And this one comes in about sub 55 retail. So a really, really good price for that feature set and something they've never had before. They've enhanced the range in other ways generally. So the hardware, for example, the plastic that it's made out of is better quality and it's scratch resistant. So the devices should look newer and nicer for longer. Yealink, are, they've also updated the processors, so they should work faster. And Yealink are bringing out an EHS adapter. So that's for use with the wireless deck headsets. So no longer would you need a handset lifter um, to use the wireless headsets on the entry level phone. So anyone who's currently using the T19, T21 and T23 will know you need a handset lifter uh, to support a wireless headset. So they're big and they're clunky and this just eliminates the need for that. We've also got the color screen option at the really good price. And then plus all of the phones in this range are supported on Yealink's device management platform. So again, the T2 series, they weren't all supported and those that were had some limitations. The T4U series phones is one that's just about to come to market and we will actually be launching NFR price on this one. So keep an eye out for that. Um, we do send emails. If you're not on our mailing list and would like to be on our mailing list, then just drop a message in that box for me there and I can get you added after the webinar so you don't miss it. Here is a basic overview. So if you're already familiar with the current 
T4S series phones, you'll see immediately that um, these are fairly similar looking. So therefore, most of the changes are going to be internal. So the audio quality is improved with the use of HD voice. They've also now all got two USB ports instead of one. So that's one of their main differences. So it will allow you to plug in multiple devices, whether it be uh, dongles, headsets, or the expansion module. Or you just want to charge your smartphone as well. That's acceptable. <laughs> they all support the acoustic shield, which is what we just looked at in the T5 series. And they all support Opus Codec. So for anyone who may not be aware, that is where it will compress the data packets um, to improve the audio quality. So anywhere where you've got poor internet and where your call quality will usually go down, these phones should be able to avoid that. You will also notice on the left, we've got an expansion module. Um, and this one works the same as the T5. So you can actually use it with all of the T4U series phones and it will detect the model to show up in the black and white or color screen. Here is where they sit in terms of current range. So the T41S is replaced by the T42U. As you can see, it looks pretty much the same in terms of physical features. The only difference here is obviously the USB port, as we mentioned, but then uh, where the T41S has got um, six keys, we've actually got page view on the T42U. T43U is what's replacing the T42S. So one main difference here we can see is that we've got an extra line of BLF keys. And again, we've got a page view there. Um, so you've got more in total. And then the other two on the T46 and T48 physically are pretty much identical. So the only differences you've got on there will be that extra USB port and the internal changes. Here we've got the expansion module in more detail. So as you can see, it connects via USB, just like the old one. Um, but now with the use of two USB ports, you could have this plugged in, but also have another port free for any other devices. And then pictured here, you can see how it connects into both um, into all the phones, so it'd be at the black and white or the color one. And you've got 20 physical keys with three page view. So that gives you 60 on the expansion module itself. And then you can daisy chain up to three in total on one phone. So really good for receptionists, this one. just added this slide um, to give you a, a comparison at a glance. So it's not the full range because I didn't think we needed that, but I thought just enough to show you the comparisons that we've just gone over. Um, so you can see the number of lines increases on both um, with the page view feature. Uh, we've got the better audio quality thanks to the acoustic shield and the smart noise filtering. There's the extra USB port as discussed. Um, We've got the gigabit on the T40U, whereas the T41S uh, was only your 10 100. And they're also now going to support the EHS 40 adapter. So currently the EHS 40 adapter is for the T5 series with the EHS 36 working on the T4, but it's now going to support the EHS 40. So you've got one adapter across the two ranges, basically. Moving on we'll take a look at their audio conferencing devices. So there are three models. The first two that you've got here is pretty much just for small to medium rooms and then medium to large. So depending on the size of the room, you would go for one or the other. The CP960, this middle one here, that's for the larger rooms, um, also comes with a color screen. It's an Android base, so very similar to your smartphone in the sense that you've got your contacts, your call history, um, I don't know what you could do in terms of downloading third party apps, but there may be some limitations, but um, it is still possible. The CP920, it's got buttons, but they are all touch sensitive. So whilst it's not got that color touch screen, it does still have that modern feel um, for that reason. It's just your CP960 uh, is the more higher end version of that. And then this middle one here also supports additional microphones if needed. So they are wireless. So they come in, they come with a charging base, and it's the charging base that plugs directly into the conference unit itself. And then you can take the microphones and move them around the table or room as needed. 
Now, it only supports, so the microphones come in a pair of two, and each unit only supports one pair of microphones. But for even bigger rooms, you can actually daisy chain up the three conference units themselves. So you could have three conference units, each with a pair of microphones. So that's three units and six microphones in total on one solution. Lastly, on the right here is the decked conference unit. So it looks exactly the same as the CP920, just a uh, decked version. So this one speaks to their W60B base station. And if you've already got decked installed somewhere, um, with that one, then you can, and they do decide they need a conference phone, you can just add it to that um, and have it all run off one system. And then the unit itself also comes with a charging base, which means it doesn't need to plug, be plugged in like the others. So you can move it around from room to room. Um, we've sold it in some places where we've got customers that have multiple rooms, but they don't tend to have people in more than one room at one time. So they've just installed this unit, which means it can sit in one place, but it allows them to move from room to room. Some key features to go through. So the audio quality is great, thanks to the technology that they use. So for example, it's designed to block out non-human noises. So if you're in a meeting and you've got someone tapping away at their laptop or clicking their pen, then it should it will always pick it up, but it should be able to recognise it and block it out and only send through the voice of the person speaking. We've got high quality microphones, so each one has got three microphones, one at each end. The range on these is good as well. So um, the highest one, your CP960, um, the mic pickup itself is 360 degrees with those three mics built in. And then the unit on its own uh, without the mics gives you a six meters pickup. If you add the extra mics, um, then it gives you a bit more. Than, it's another three meters on top. And then if you wanted to daisy chain the units, then you could cover over 20 meters. So quite a big room um, that that can support. Here we have the portable speaker phones. Um, so there's two. Uh, one is basically smaller and slightly cheaper than the other. Other than that, there's not really much difference between the two. Um, so these are really good for personal use or small huddle rooms. Um, the CP900 we actually used um, yesterday, sorry, a couple of days ago for our sales meeting. So if anyone's been to our offices, we've got a fairly large boardroom, um, but there was just four of us around the big table. And then we have the CP900 in the middle with our sales director joining from video. And um, audio quality was absolutely fine. Um, I'm actually using this CP900 right now. So if you can't hear all the lorries outside and the beeping and the shutter doors that I can, then it's doing its job. <laughs> So both of these connect via USB and Bluetooth. So I'm actually plugged in via USB right at the moment, but you could connect via Bluetooth to your mobile phone, or if you wanted to connect via Bluetooth, so wirelessly to a laptop, then you can get this unit with a dongle or also buy the dongle separately. And then they're integrated with Teams as well. So you've got the little Teams button there. I don't know if you can see it, but you press that and your Teams app should come up on your device. We will take a look at the deck range now. So uh, some existing models you'll recognize uh, with a lot of new products that have either uh, just recently been launched or are about to be launched. So here we have the single cell portfolio. Um, so there's, there's actually two base station options. So the W60B, which most of you will already be familiar with, um, and Yealink are now bringing out the W70B. So both will, will run side by side each other for at least about a year or so. But the idea being that eventually the W70B will replace the existing one. So it's still a single cell base, but uh, instead of supporting eight handsets with eight calls, it's going to support 10 handsets and 20 calls. Um, and then along with it, they're bringing out a new handset as well. Um, but obviously it's still going to support the other handsets, the existing ones, so the W568, for example, and the W59R ruggedized model. And the W53P isn't actually pictured here, but it is still very much going and it is in the portfolio as, as well. 
So taking a look at the various possibilities as a whole, you've got a lot of options within the single cell DECT. So we've got the handsets, as we've just discussed. There's the DECT conference phone, which we've taken a look at. Plus, you can also connect um, the T41 to run off the DECT base station using their DECT dongle. Um, so that's where you're, uh, rather than with the T5, where you're turning the phone to the base, this is where we're um, connecting the phone to the base as if it were a cordless handset. And then there's also a range extender. So the RT30, if you need additional coverage, but multi a little bit overkill, then you've got that as an option there as well. The ruggedized handset was launched last year and it's been really popular since. Um, it's also IP67 rated and most in the market, I think, are at IP65. I think maybe one's at IP66, but we're basically at the highest tier with the A-Link one. And here's a close-up for you. So we've got a decent color size screen. There is a built-on clip. So often other makes of cordless handsets, you'll often find they come with a belt clip, but it's a clip on one. And I can't tell you how many times we do have customers calling us back after it being lost or you can't find it, but the manufacturers don't tell us to send, send to sell them a spare part. So that's a really good additional new feature to have. The surface itself is got a rubbery feel to it, so it should prevent from slipping, scratching, also makes it easier to wipe down and disinfect, you know, if you're using it, I don't know, in a, in a hospital or somewhere where you need it extra clean. The keys themselves are backlit, so if you're in a dark place, you should still be able to see your buttons and be able to dial. And the mics on it have noise cancelling as well. So perfect for your factories or garages. I mean, pretty much anywhere where you're going to need a ruggedized handset, I would say is typically going to be a loud environment as well. So again, that's a really good addition that they've brought in to that, uh, to that handset. There's vibration as well, which I know not all of the cordless handsets tend to do. And we've got inbuilt Bluetooth, so you can use a wireless headset with it. This is the new single cell base station in the handset. So uh, the W70B that I mentioned at the beginning of these uh, of the deck slides. So as a bundle with that new handset, it then becomes the W73P. So on the base station itself, we have improved chip performance and better sound quality. And this one is going to support 10 handsets with 20 simultaneous calls, and that will be two calls per handset. So if you've got a call waiting, for example, um, uh, then that will support it. We've got a new web interface as well, so it's easier to use and there's improved signal. Then the handset, as you can see, has a whole completely new design to the existing ones. The existing ones are uh, got a silvery colour. This one's dark, it looks much smarter. The hardware has been updated with better microphones and speakers, and the battery capacity is increased, so we've got longer battery life, and then it's also got that spring-loaded belt clip, uh, like I showed you in the ruggedized one. So to summarize, on the base station, we've got the um, support of more handsets and calls than it had before, the stronger performance, the clearer audio experience, the better web management via the new web interface, and uh, just more features in general. And summarizing the handset, so as we just saw, and you can actually see it closer now, so we've got the new design, the clearer audio quality, um, the improved performance, and the longer battery life. Here we have the uh, multi-cell system. So this one was launched again last year, similar time to the ruggedized handset. And again, it's been quite popular, especially as the price point is really competitive to other multi-cell solutions in the market. Um, so this one would be for your bigger sites that need more coverage whilst they'll be able to roam around between the bases um, and have more handsets. So on this one, you can have up to 30 base stations in total on the solution and supporting up to 100 handsets with 100 simultaneous calls. 
some key features to look at. So firstly, the setup is quick and easy. So Yealink have a um, what they call a deployment kit. We also call it a um, site survey kit. So basically something you as a reseller would invest in so that you can take to your customer site and it allows you to work out how many base stations you're going to need and where they're going to sit. So that's something that you'll do prior to ordering. Uh, we strongly recommend it. And their uh, uh, survey kit is actually compared to others. Again, it's really competitive price. It's only a few hundred pounds. So definitely worth investing in if you're going to do multi-cell sites. In terms of... Um, Oh, we've also got, sorry, I missed that bit there. <laughs> we've also got, obviously, the roaming between the bases. So it's seamless. Um, and as I said before, you can have up to 30 bases with 100 handsets on there. In terms of devices to use on the solution, so you've got not just the cord cordless handsets. So this is similar to the single cell. So we've got the cordless handsets, as we've already been through. And again, you can have the conference phone units and the desk phone. Lastly, you've also got easy access to integrate with various phone book types. So you should have all your major one there. We do get asked about these quite a lot. So hopefully that one helps. And then the W90B is newer. It's also multi-cell, but this one's for even larger sites. So for this one, you can have up to 60 base stations. You've got 250 handsets with 250 calls. And then they also come with the antennas to give you even better signal and even better coverage. And then here again, we've got the supported handset. So all the cordless handset options with the conference phone unit and the desk phone as well. Just so you can see side by side, so this is a comparison between those two multi-cell base stations that we've just had a look at. So the main difference is is the local area network sync um, on the W90. And then obviously the number of bases and handsets that they support is greater on the W90. They both still are limited to eight calls per base um, and support the same handset options in terms of what cordless handsets are compatible. But then additionally on, your double, uh, on the W90, you've got those antennas for the higher coverage. For anyone who's not aware, and I'm sure most of you will be, Yealink is also fully supported on 3CX and is one of our most popular choices alongside 3CX systems. So you can see here all the models that are currently supported. So pretty much all of them, even the new you know, T3 series, 5 series, T4U, everything we've looked at today, the only thing that's due to be supported on there is the new W73 base station. Uh, but don't worry, that will be added. In terms of functionality, all their advanced features, such as the hot desk in, voicemail, etc., they're all supported on 3CX. Uh, we've not come across any limitations. Yaelin can't aware of any. So, um, yeah, at this moment in time, it's all supported. If you do want to know more about 3CX in general, as aside from Yaelink, um, then just pop a message in the box, and that's something I can come back to you separately on. The final part in the slides today is just to go through the headsets, so the wired headsets and the wireless headsets. Now, before we go in, I want to just give you a little, little bit of background of why you might want to consider Yaelink for your headsets. Obviously, being mainly an IP phone brand, and traditionally, most IP phone brands don't have much choice of headsets. If they do, they've maybe only got one or two. Um, so I appreciate it's not going to be your most obvious choice, and it's easy to just stick with your, um, with your main typical headset brand. However, Yealink have heavily invested uh, on the headset part of their business. So currently, a third of the total R&D investment is going solely on the headset part. Technically, they're more than capable, so they've got over seven years' experience on the deck side. Obviously, they're, you know, as we've just seen, their, um, their handset decked uh, is really good. 
they've also got over 20 years experience on the audio side, you know, with theirs amongst being the best, as we know, they're number one in the market. They've also put a lot of time to research. So they've been researching over the years just to analyze the headset market, understand the supply chain, because obviously it's something that's fairly that was fairly new to them. Um, they've also researched loads of customers over the world just to understand the different headset requirements, uh, plus also you know, analyzing and testing various headset styles so that they can find the best um, wearing experience for their headsets. Here is their full headset portfolio at a glance. So on the left here, we've got UH34 and UH36, which is basically a entry and mid-level range USB headset. There is a UH38 coming soon, as you can see there. So that's kind of even bigger with even bigger ear pieces. And then um, on the right, we've got the YHS34 and YHS36, which is the same as the UH34 and UH36 in terms of the headpiece. The only difference is that rather being USB, these ones come with the RJ9 bottom cable. So they're actually designed to be used with the A-Link desk phones. And then most recently added, as you can see on the right here, is their wireless range. So we've got options for desk phone only um, and sorry, for desk phone and soft phone. And then we've also got some workstations which are suitable for teams. So here is a closer look at the wireless headset options. We'll start with those. So the WH62 and uh, WH63 are for your desk phones and computers because it's also got the additional USB connection. So for the WH62, you've got it's an over the head option and then you're six with a single earpiece or dual earpiece choice. And then your WH63 is simply an in-ear option instead. So depending on your customer's preference, you'd go for one or the other. Headpiece itself, I've got a busy light on it. I don't, you probably can't quite see it in this picture, but if you have a look at some of the other pictures, you will notice that on the earpiece, it's got a ring and that will light up in either green or red, depending on whether somebody's on a call. So it should make it easier to see if people are on calls. I know other existing headsets I've seen from other brands, some have a tiny, tiny little light, but it doesn't, it doesn't really make it very clear. And then the USB connection that you've got obviously means you can connect to your PC at the same time as your desk phone. So I've got that set up, for example, now. So when I'm using my desk phone, I speak on the headset. But as soon as I want to go on a video call or, you know, listen to something on the computer in my break, as soon as I start pressing something on the computer, it will pick that up automatically and the sound will come from the other side. Then we've got the WH66 and WH67. So this is the work at home station, as they've described it. So these are really good for use with uh, Teams, as you can actually log into Teams on that built in display that you've got there. And then similarly to the other ones, you've got an over the head option uh, with one earpiece or two, and then an in ear option if that's preferred. And they've got that busy light as well. You can also then for these ones get, uh, so this is something you buy separately, but it's a wireless mobile phone charger and stand so it can stick in the end. So you could connect this to your computer um, to take video calls over the computer. You can then also be logged into Teams on the screen and take your Teams calls. And then by adding the mobile phone in using the Bluetooth connection, you can connect over mobile phone. So it really is becomes an all in one um, working phone station and this one here the WH66 so that one with the dual earpiece that is what we're giving away today with the wireless charger as well these are the wired headsets so on the slide we're showing just the USB models um, but as I said before the RJ9 version they look exactly the same it's just the fact that it's got an RJ9 nine cable instead of USB. Um, but the reason why we put these ones here is so that we can show you that the USB one also comes with a 3.5 mil jack. So you can actually switch between devices if you need to. So most smartphones tend to have a 3.5 mil, for example. 
And then they've also uh, got a Teams button, so they're integrated with Teams. So on that call control panel where you can do your volume or mute it, you can also press the Teams button to bring up Teams on your device. The ear cushions are designed for all day wear and comfort. Um, so really nice leatherette ear cushions. I remember when I tried these, this UH36 for the first time, the first thing I thought was how soft it felt on my ears. Um, so they're really comfortable, these ones. Uh, you've got the leatherette on both the UH36 and the UH34, which is the entry level. But um, if you did have a site where you needed to save a couple of extra quid and weren't fussed about that part, you can get a version of the UH34 that's got a foam ear cushion. So that one's really more just a money saving option. Obviously, we appreciate sometimes you'll go into a site and they're going to need a thousand headsets. So that couple of extra quid will always make the difference there. Cams. I bet a lot of you didn't know that Yealink are now selling webcams, so um, or webcams, should I say. So this is literally just the type that you would have on your computer. So it sits on top of your monitor. So with everyone working from home now, this would be a really good addition and it comes in at a decent price as well. We've got full HD video quality on here and HD audio. And then the lens itself is rotatable. So if you are getting up as you're speaking and moving around, it is going to follow you. And then we've also got a built-in lens cap, so uh, you can actually cover it when it's not in use for security reasons. And then you've got a light on there as well, so that's going to uh, show up when you're connected to a call. In terms of support from ProView, there's actually plenty to be had. So NFR products. You will often find when we launch a new Yaling product, it tends to come. We tend to alongside it give you a heavily discounted NFR price. So that's something we work on with Yaylinks together just so that we can get it um, as low as possible for you. So there is going to be there is actually currently already NFR price on the wireless headsets. So if you haven't seen that and you're interested, again pop a message in the box and I can come back to you separately. And then we will be sending out NFR pricing on the T4U. So again, if you're not on our mailing list and you want to get those notifications for when those new products are out, just drop a message in the box. If there's anything you've seen today that doesn't currently sit on an NFR offer, Prove you can still help you with that. Obviously, it's not going to um, be as heavily discounted as the ones uh, supported by Yealink, but Prove you do appreciate that you've also got to do your testing. So we'll, you know, we're always happy to look at doing a discount for you there. I've just had a question asking when can we get hold of the NFR W73 piece? So um, these ones, the stock for these are they've actually just arrived in our warehouse. We're finishing our final testing. So as soon as we've sorted that, because we like to test it very vigorously, we'll do all the provisioning as well. So as soon as we've confirmed that that's OK, we're going to be sending out our launch email. So I would expect that to be, if not this week, early next week. Um, so if you're on our mailing list, you'll get notified. If you're not, or if you don't know if you are, I'm sure if you are, just pop a message in the box and I can check for you. And if you're not, I can send you an invite for it. Um, but to the person who's asked the question, I can come back to you separately as well as soon as it's available. And then for in terms of sales advice and support. So um, we do a lot of pre-sales support. All of our sales guys here are technically trained and know all the products inside out. So whether you've just got some compatibility questions or feature questions, we can help you. Or if you want us to, you know, kind of sit with you and go through your solution from start to finish and help with you and your customer, then again, we can do that as well. We've also got our technical support team on hand. So anything post-sale, if your customer comes into an issue, maybe they've not been able to get it working properly or the setup's gone wrong um, or maybe they think there's a fault, then again, we're literally just a phone call away or an email away and we can help you with that as well. Just to add, so we do also do the entire Yearlink video conferencing range. So the video conferencing for SIP, Teams and Zoom. 
it's not something I've covered today just because we had a lot to go through already, uh, but it will no doubt be doing something on the video conferencing kit in the future. Uh, but if that is something you want to know about in the meantime, um, feel free to pop a message in the box. I can come to you or you can just contact us anytime that comes about. So that's it for today. Uh, if we've got any questions, I'll hang about for a bit.